Terry Lawson, and you're listening to Terry Lawson Photography Conversations. It's March 26, 2013, and we're in my studio again here in Edmonton, Alberta. Today, I'm thrilled to have the chance to talk to Penny and Jim Malberg, two of the founding members of Backport Swing, a band from here in Edmonton. The members of the band include, of course, Penny and Jim, who both sing vocals and play guitar and mandolin, Cam Newfeld, who plays violin, and Kevin Jacobson, who uh, keeps the beat going by playing the bass. They play an eclectic style of music, including old-time swing, folk, bluegrass, and even jazz. And they've put on many miles over the years, making their way across the western provinces, playing at many of the festivals that happen during summer. Welcome to Conversations, you two. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us here. And uh, I'm glad you're here because uh, you guys are busy people. To have uh, you take a bit of time out of your day is uh, really appreciated. I'd like to start by having you give us a little bit of an idea of where you guys started musically. What, where are your roots? And even giving us some examples of some of your mentors musically. Maybe Penny, we can start with you. Well, let's see. I um, I actually I had a grade, a grade four teacher that was really into awesome music. And when I was in grade four, um, he used to bring us into this room. Um, we didn't really have a music class per se, but those that wanted to stay after school could come over to his classroom and he would play really great songs like, you know, things from Bob Dylan, the Blowing in the Wind and and, you know, and then he'd talk a little bit about the poetry of that. And, you know, I remember thinking in grade four, like, wow, this guy is so neat, you know. Yeah. And he, you know, introduced us to Carole King and and ta- the Tapestry album a little bit later on. And, um, you know, he was real kind of a folky at heart. And I come to realize after the fact, at the time, I was just a kid thinking, oh, this guy listens to some of the same records my brothers do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh other kids in the class were you know had weren't as familiar with the with that style of music but i had three brothers that all were into music so you know i kind of had heard it a bit but uh so he kept us after school for singing and stuff and introduced yeah. me to those type of people and i always loved music yeah so um uh influences uh for you oh well let's see i really liked carol king and I really liked Joni Mitchell. I really liked for female artists and that genre of stuff. As a kid growing up, I liked that. But then when I got to be in my teens, I really liked listening to Van Morrison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, that style of music. And and then really, uh, just all styles of music. I, I liked everything. I liked country. My dad really liked old country. He was a country guy. And, you know, I grew up with Lawrence Welk. And, uh, (laughs) you know, so, I mean, I could listen to every kind of music. I liked it all. Yeah. So I had so many influences. It was incredible. Yeah. And I guess uh, uh, that's that's what's uh, neat about music is it's uh, there's no definition of it. Right. No, it's just music. music. Yeah. Exactly. All kinds of music. Yeah. Yeah. So what about uh, what about you, Jim? Uh, well, I, I grew up with a pretty uh, varied exposure to my dad was uh, Country and Western music, uh, you know, heavy on the Western, uh, was what he liked to listen to. And my mom listened to CKUA, and she tuned into the the opera, uh, like to Metropolitan, not the Grand Old. She yeah. was into more of those kinds of things. I remember growing up listening to Herb Alpert and the T. Warner Brass. And, <laughs> yeah, these yes. kinds of things. Lots of the, the crooners. <laughs> And uh, I had a few. Mu- I had some music lessons as a child, but it didn't really interest me very much until I was about 19, and a friend of mine played me a Doc Watson record, and it just turned my world sideways. Yeah, I had to run out and buy a guitar and, you know, try to learn how to play that kind of music, and then right. started listening to Flat and Scruggs and and uh, you know, Bill Monroe and. Uh, that kind of stuff, really, Brisman really got me interested in other, you know, other kinds of string music, other styles, and, uh, and I was just, never. David Bromberg was really, uh, you know, 
And we dug him too, and and then New Grass Revival happened and changed and everybody's world. Well, everybody's world, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, and I was just getting interested in that kind of music when you know, like late seventies, and uh, so the the Steam Powered Aerial Plane album was you know only a couple, few years old. But by the time it percolated to the prairies of Canada, you know, yeah. a few years later, it was sort of current for us, alternate folky, you know, uh, folk music kind of. Yeah, fans well, like in in, uh, in those days, really, there was uh, the Beatles mm -hmm. and Simon and Garfunkel and, and the Rolling Stones. Mm -hmm. And the music you're talking about is is way on the fringe, right? Yes. And so Yeah, well, my contemporaries were listening to April Wine and, <laughs> and uh, Chilliwack and... Yes. You know, these are the bands on the radio, yes. the Stampeders, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, and so uh, it's, guess it's who? yeah, it's interesting uh, that 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 fringe existed that nobody knew about, right? That's true. And uh, and I think that it just blew me away. Yeah, it totally captivated me. But that that fringe that existed at that time is becoming, it's now almost come to the front, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, to a certain degree. To a certain degree, yeah, yeah. Uh, what what interests me is the blending of stuff, because we all have grown up listening to all different styles of music, and so we don't have a tradition. It's not like we grew up in some backwoods right. holler where everybody we know plays the same kind of music. Right. Right, and we never heard that downtown stuff. We've heard all kinds of music from all around the world, and incorporating all those kind of influences in people's playing and singing and writing you know it's interesting to me how it gets mixed in together and blended and new things grow yeah you can certainly hear I mean you mentioned CKUA uh, and uh, boy oh boy you can hear influences when you listen to that radio station mm -hmm. and uh, it's all there and it's it's wonderful that it it's you know got a place to uh, be heard. Yeah, yeah. So, what were the beginnings of the band that that you play in right now, Backport Swing? Uh, how did that all start? Well, I was uh, playing music and um, had been playing in bands, local bands, and Penny had been playing and singing on her own when we got together and so we naturally were you know playing music together just for fun yeah and uh, I thought it was sounding pretty good and uh, we had an opportunity to host an open stage in St. Albert uh, together and so that kind of got us you know having to develop a repertoire put on a little set before other people came and what yep. if other, sometimes other people didn't come and then we had to play more to fill up the time so yep. here we were playing working on material and uh, then we thought it'd be fun to play a festival or you know get some gigs playing and you know get a band together yep. well also we we had written some songs that we wanted to record and so we um, our friend of ours, Kevin, um, had a studio, so we and he also was a bass player. So we said, "Well, we'd like to record some of our own material. Yep. Would could we do be into it?" So he said yes. And after we recorded them, we said, "Well, you know, sure, it would be nice with some bass on there." <laughs> so he played some bass on Perfect. there, and uh, in the meantime, we thought, "Well, you know, our good friend Cam, um, we've sat in with him during other festivals, just jamming sometimes and whatnot." At that point, and we said, "Hey, Cam, we're doing this CD. Would you mind playing some fiddle?" So Cam Newfeld sat in and he played a bit of fiddle for us and uh, on the CD. And basically it was to more just kind of get something, um, some of our own songs recorded together. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, as after it was recorded and I started to kind of, you know, market it a bit, um, we started to get gigs. So then it was about these guys asking them, well, would you, <laughs> would you like to play some live gigs with us? <laughs> And uh, sure enough, uh, they agreed, um, and we've been playing gigs ever since together. Yeah, well, uh, it's it's interesting how 
it all comes together, right? It uh, does. It yeah. is. Yeah. There's there's a purpose in all of this somehow mm -hmm. that yes. uh, it was meant to be, right? Yes, it wasn't a pre-planned. It really really wasn't a pre-planned event. It was we had a we made the CD and then we had a CD release to expose it to people. Yeah. And shopped it around to a few places, and the next thing you know, Back Force Swing was born. Yeah. yeah. So how the millionaire? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, where does the uh, where does the name of the band come from, Back Force Swing? Well, we've been trying to think of something with yeah. what we would call ourselves, just Jim and myself, as uh, you know, to, when we were going to make this record the CD, and we were spending a lot of time on the road then, driving around from. Uh, Lethbridge back and forth from Edmonton, his family's down there, and often we would be just in the car talking about names, throwing different things out there, and somehow, I, to this day, I can't remember now, it's been so long, uh, that it just, I think it was a combination, I think that we both said different words and it was formed. And yeah. It's sort of battle fatigue, it. I don't know if you ever you know, <laughs> tried to name a band, but uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world, No, it's really. not, it's not. So, uh, but at least, it, but the one thing about the name is it kind of gives people an idea of what it feels like to listen to our music. And it's a perfect name because uh, it is just like sitting on the back porch listening to you guys play music. Uh, and it has that, that style of mm -hmm. very comfortable, it doesn't fit into a particular genre, but it, it encompasses a lot of styles that we just talked about. You know mm -hmm. this this whole thing of right. a style of music that that comes from uh, many places, mm -hmm. and it's it's perfect. So are you guys uh, pretty busy this summer playing festivals and, and gigs here and there? Fairly busy. We're pretty steady. We're getting so I think now that after hitting this uh, this many years together now it's we get a lot of referrals. Yes. And so we get weddings and parties, anniversary parties and. Um, and we're playing some festivals. We we're booked for four festivals this summer. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do some things as a duo, Jim and I as well. We play, we're play. we doing a couple festivals as just Jim and I as a duo and doing some MC work and some films that way. And uh, um, I understand that you guys went to Australia and you did some gigs there too. We did. <laughs> we did. <laughs> we that's, did. A, that's a cool gig. Yeah. Well, we had, yeah, we had a little teeny uh, appearance at a... Uh, the Winter Moon Festival, which is near the Whitsunday Islands in uh, Queensland. Yeah. And it it's a beautiful little festival on a river. And we had a great up time. in the there. hills. And Lots of fun. They're very much great like a similar time. to a reminded people, us of, uh, great music. of the North Country Fair here. North Country it's Fair. It's kind of that same kind of feel. Yeah. Even the people started looking alike after a while. <laughs> well, yeah, not so. Yeah, it's just that you would see a couple and they interact and treat each other and behave and sort of dress in the style that reminds you that's just like our folkies back home, <laughs> Terry and Patty. Wow, <laughs> look at him! He's got his Chuck Gear shirt on and everything. And, you know, things like that. You would, yeah. you know, it's so, funny yeah. how we had a great time. You know, yeah. there's the character who dances by himself and sort of looks a little odd. And there he is on the dance floor. <laughs> yeah. We had actually we just came back from Hawaii as well, and we had played over there a little bit. Just it was kind of not unplanned, but we had met some friends. My cousin lived there, and she yeah. um, knew some Hawaiian people, so she had invited them over, and we got to play a bit there. And played at one of the places with them one night that he had a little gig there, so that was kind of fun. And if you just bring your instruments wherever you go, they seem to land yourself in certain situations. You yeah. Know? It's just like sitting on the porch. Right? It's just like sitting on the porch. <laughs> the porch is everywhere. Yeah. Now you mentioned the beginnings of uh, you know, of the band and recording. Do you have you done uh, many more recordings since then? Well, we did. We've done two more recordings since then. Uh, we did another CD that was kind of half original material and half of covers we were interested in. And I forget the year, and then. Just last year, years, now it's a year and a half, we released a live ago. CD mm -hmm. that we had made of songs that people had seemed to request and, and that was from a, different, you know, a bunch of different our shows and yeah. that we had recorded. Yeah. So, yeah, that's where it's at. We continue to write songs. and So you are doing, uh, you are writing original material it. too. Mm -hmm. no, yeah. that's, uh, that's, I think that's pretty important, right? 
uh, for a band to have uh, original material because it helps to give you a little bit of an identity. And it is. It's great to have original material, but it's also great. Um, I really like to do a few cover tunes. I I um, I think that if if music doesn't get carried forward and never gets reproduced and re you know re re recorded and re replayed, then a lot of good songs are going to be left behind. Yeah. So although I like to really write songs, there is songs that I really think are great songs that I like singing of other mm -hmm. people's. Yeah. So um, I like the blending of the two. I think also uh, there are songs that you play as a band that people want to hear too. Yes. And you have to play those too. Exactly. I mean, I think of uh, an example would be Blue Rodeo. There mm -hmm. are so many tunes from like 25 years ago that these guys uh, made their uh, bread and butter from. Mm -hmm. And if they don't play those songs, That's boy it. oh boy, the, the fans <laughs> will riot <Yes. laughs> if they don't. And, and they acknowledge we'll that. feel disappointed. They acknowledge yeah. that. Uh, right. As a band, that we need to play these songs because that is what our fans want to hear. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's uh, there's your original material, the songs that that you do that people want to hear, and as you say, some of these cover tunes that uh, you're playing that because you like to play them, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. then there's the new songs that we're writing all the time, so yeah. it's hard to keep. Yeah. Um, all those ideas fresh and rolling, yeah. and the time to play them all the time. To, you yeah. know, often um, you have these 45-minute slots, sets, where you have a long list of material. <laughs> what are we going to play? Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes okay, we've it's got hard 300 to songs we want to play. we got 45 minutes. <laughs> yes. And they want you to play at least eight of these songs that they want to hear. <laughs> I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, I think uh, this is a pretty ex exciting time for you guys because uh, you're coming up on 10 years as a band, mm -hmm. which, is, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, I think what's even more amazing is the fact that uh, it's the same four people that have hung in there for that 10 years, which is pretty amazing. That's very unusual for a band uh, to, to survive uh, <laughs> that long uh, together. So... Uh, good on you. So, tell me what it feels like to be here ten years later. It's good. It feels good. Kind it's of amazing, really. It, it really Amazed. Is. It, it, it <laughs> is. And um, it, it's still it's still fresh by the same breath. Like um, we still play a lot of new venues just about all the time where people haven't heard us before. Um, I always ask at every gig how many have not. You know, how many new people in the audience? Yeah. Um, there's always new ones. Um, it, it, it amazes me that people will still keep coming out and hearing her band. And uh, and I'm really privileged and honored to play with such three great musicians. And we're all, you know, I made a little joke about how we're, you know, we're still playing, we're still friends. Jim and I are still married and we're still here. And are you still with us? Yeah. You know, and they are. Like, it's great. The people are still with us. I think that's a testament to uh, who the four of you are as individuals to begin with, and that uh, uh, you you have uh, you love of music, you you love people, and uh, you love to play together, and and so that uh, uh, certainly helps in uh, uh, having a band, you know, have longevity, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, you seem to also want to uh, uh, do new things, because I think that's also something that has to happen. You can't, you know, certainly you have to play the, the old songs that we talked about, but you have to have uh, new life, right? Yes, in, every in once what in a you while, do. you need to have Because that that that's what gives a spark, you know, this, mm -hmm. these new things that, that challenge you uh, mm -hmm. to play better and, and right. to become a better band. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, 10 years, I'm certain that there are, uh, there has to be some uh, memorable moments that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that have happened in those times. Maybe you could share with us something that uh, uh, comes to mind. Well, actually, the most memorable thing I can think of in playing music was playing at an old folks' home, and there was, 
a nursing home and people were wheeled in and there was a person in kind of a stretcher bed like it could maybe sit up but mostly it was reclining and this person was all kind of swaddled up in bandages and just laying there and looked like they were in a coma I, you know from where I was standing just this you know person laying down and they looked so sick and everything and we're and the next thing I know, I look over and I can see that the the toe, the person's toe, was sticking out of the bandages. And, and he's was just tapping, keeping the beat to the music. Tapping to the beat. Wow. And then I thought, wow, I'm so happy that I, you know, get to help that person to experience music and uh, you know some of the the blessings that that yeah. that gives to people. Yeah. You know, and even in such a bad condition. He person. still feels it. He I still, still feel feels music, it. music, and now music was doing something. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. That's very cool. Penny, do you have anything that comes to mind? Oh, we've had so many amazing experiences. Um, I remember one time we were playing up in uh, the Peace Country, and this really cool-looking couple was watching us play, and after they, the show was over, they came around and introduced themselves and said, you know, we... It was a Sunday, it was the end of this festival, and they said, well, you know, we know that you have to eat breakfast in the morning, and we just live down the road a little bit, and it's kind of on your way home. And we'd like to invite you for breakfast. Cool. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's so interesting, but I thought, you know, it's a seven, eight-hour drive home, you just want to kind of get home, and, you know, so many people uh, approach you all the time, and, you know, we're often busy and in a hurry, and you're, you know, chasing the road all the time, and... Yep. and um, but anyways, I said, well, you go ask the guys, and if they want to do it, sure, I'm in. So she comes back a little while later, and she says, well, I just talked to the guys, and they said, sure. Well, okay. So the next morning, <laughs> we go down there, we pull into this yard. It's this organic farm. It's the coolest place I've ever been to this day, I think, in my life. It was, everything was so, they homesteaded there years ago. They built their log mm -hmm. cabin. They built everything. They had organic farming and pigs and and everything was just made so much with their hands. And um, since that day, um, I've kind of took on a new thing. Saying, it's a nice house I've ever been in. The nice <laughs> house, house, yes. It was all run off the grid. It was like run so, like their kids now were older going to university, so they got into them into a little bit of solar, but prior to that, all off the grid. Yeah. Just hardworking, really awesome people. Mm -hmm. and uh, they made us the best, the most incredible breakfast mm. we'd ever eaten. Uh, everything was like, you know, from the chickens, from their own eggs, and the yeah. bacon was their home pigs, and their, everything was homegrown, everything. And they're sitting in this amazing little cabin thinking, oh, this is the most coolest place I think I've been. And my motto from that day became, just say yes. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all in a hurry, but if you just stop and accept uh, things sometimes, and just take time, mm -hmm. you can experience the gifts that are you're going to receive back from you know, putting it out there. So um, it was it was a really rewarding day for me learning about, um, you know, you say, you know, you're into people and everything. Yes, we're all into people, but sometimes your energy gets expelled a lot. Uh, it's about getting it rejuvenated sometimes. And sometimes that comes from a place where you're not looking and just to be open-minded to that. And yeah. So that was a really big eye-opener for me that day. Oh, that sounds, uh, that sounds fantastic. Yeah, it was really it. great. I love it. You don't want to share any... Bad experiences, do you? <laughs> Not so much. I guess what I like to say is another thing that I really uh, value or I think has been great about doing this is playing at other festivals, meeting other musicians, for, you know, uh, especially the Bluegrass Festivals, meeting other people who are kind of doing the same thing. You know, they have day jobs, they're working people, but they really love music, they got a band together, yeah. they got their sound. They're willing to drive, you know, to wherever to these festivals and get together and play music and jam with each other and you know stay, you know, stay up late and get up early. Funny, and I read a funny quote that it says you take your five thousand dollar instrument, you put it in your five hundred dollar car, you drive five thousand miles <laughs> to make fifty dollars. <laughs> Isn't that true? It's true. <laughs> so you beat all the other nuts who, are, who think that's a good idea. Exactly. And, get, and get some camaraderie and uh, and, and the reason, fellowship. And, and the reason you're wonderful. doing that is to play music. Yeah, because you love music. That, that's, mm -hmm. that's the love that 
you yeah. all share yeah. is this the for the playing music. the music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we met a lot of great people and and not only just musicians. pickers, just like these people who took us home for breakfast. True um, yeah. enough. They're not yeah. all pickers. They're yeah. just all yeah. people that just love music. Yeah. Ten years again as the band. Uh, uh, some plans for a little celebration? Uh -huh. We do. We do. We have a big party coming up on April the 6th. It's at Brittany's Lounge in downtown Edmonton. Um, at 7.30. It's at 7.30. Um, we have our band's going to play and entertain you for the night. I've also uh, invited our good friend Rod Olstad to sit in with us for the evening. Yeah. Um, he sat in for us on a few gigs where Cam was out traveling. And so... Um, the only thing better than one fiddle in the band is two. So we decided they, you know, they both know a few of these uh, fiddle tunes and stuff that we've written and worked up. So we thought, yep. well, let's have twin fiddles on this. It'll be a fun yep. night. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have a cake. And, uh, you know, we're going to have a party. So we're hoping people, we're going to, I'm asking for people to, um, we're going to have the largest choir in Edmonton, I hope. Um, we're going to teach you all a song and we're going to want you all to sing it with us. Yep. Um, I got a new dance I'm going to teach everybody that night. <laughs> So um, bring your dancing shoes, <laughs> and we're, yeah, we're gonna have fun. We're gonna party. Yeah, we're gonna play celebrate. Some old favorites, play some new ones. People yeah. can request songs. We're hoping that we remember them. Um, <laughs> we may not remember some of them. Some have gone, I think. Uh, I'm uh, sad to say, but uh, some of the songs that we started out with ten years ago, um, I'm not sure if we remember every single one. But we're willing to take a stab at it. If yeah. you can remember it, maybe we'll remember it. <laughs> um, but so that's kind of the night we got planned for that party. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Now, I assume that people can find out more information about this on uh, your it's website. It's on our website, yeah, uh, our website. Yeah. Backporchswing.ca. Yeah. Um, tickets are 10 bucks at the door. Yeah. Um, come early, it'll be crowded. I suspect that we're going to have a gang. I, I think you will. Yeah, and I look, it's looking good. Um, so, yeah, um, it's going to be a good time. Yeah. Do you have... Uh, any sort of plans for the band for the future, you know, or status quo? Well, we're not really at liberty to discuss our plans about world domination. <laughs> but, uh, so I would have to say that we um, just plug take it, it as it comes, plug it away. The phone yeah. keeps ringing, keep playing. Yeah. And if it stops ringing, we will, I guess we'll mm -hmm. do something else. Awesome. So... I want to thank you guys for uh, for coming down here today to to talk with me. This has been really fun. Thank you, and, Terry. Uh, yeah. uh, I love your passion for your music. I love listening to your music, and uh, I hope I that uh, people in uh, in the the things that we talked about today appreciate uh, and understand the, the the passion that you have. So, thanks thanks for coming down. Well, thank you for having yeah. us. <laughs> You have been listening to Terry Lawson Photography Conversations, a series of interviews with local photographers and those involved in the art scene. I hope you can join us for our next interview.